Let's talk about algebra. This is a quick introduction and I am so glad that you are here. So first of all, what is algebra and what can it do for us? Well, algebra can help us figure out so many different things, the payment on a brand new car or how much you need to save for retirement or even how much lumber you need for a construction project. But we're not going to start there. We're going to start much more simply with something like this guy. So this one says three plus what is equal to five. Now I'll bet that you can guess what the question mark is. In algebra though, we don't use question marks. Instead, we're gonna replace that with an X with some kind of a letter, which is a variable. So the variable just represents a number that we're either trying to figure out or one that we can plug in for different values. Variables are typically a letter in almost all the cases as you're going through algebra. It's gonna be like an X, a Y, or a Z. These letters also stand for a number, and that number could be either one that we all already know that we get a plug in or one that we are solving for. So for example, we might want to evaluate 5 plus x. Now when we're evaluating, we want to find the value of, and I'm going to find the value of this expression. So an expression is just a collection of numbers and variables and some math operators. In this case, our expression is 5 plus x. The key though is that there is no equal sign here. We are going to plug in values for x starting with x equals 3. So as I'm starting with x equals 3, I can take that 5 plus x and I can think of it as 5 plus whatever I'm going to plug in there for x. Now I'm going to plug in x is a 3, so this becomes 5 plus 3, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Let's do the next one. The next one is x equals negative 1. See if you can do this one, and then you can follow along with me as well. So again, I'm going to think of that 5 plus x as 5 plus whatever value I'm letting x be. And in this case, that value is a negative 1. So I can do 5 minus 1, and that value is equal to 4. How did you do? Let's do x equals 1 half together. So I'm going to take that expression, 5 plus x, and I'm going to replace the x with a 1 half. So that becomes 5 plus 1 half. Now I can definitely call this 5 and a half, but your teacher might instead want you to write this as a fraction, as a single fraction. So to do that as a single fraction, I'm going to go ahead and do 2 times 5 and then plus the one, and it's still all over that two. So I get two times five, which is 10, or 11 over two. Okay, how did you do? I'll bet you did great. Let's look at this next expression. So we wanna find the value of a, a is my variable, divided by two. So this is a over two, but I can write that as a divided by Two. Now I really like the fraction notation a over the 2 because it's just a little simpler to write. I want to start with a equals 6. So when a is equal to 6, we get a over 2, but I'm going to replace the a with a 6. So that becomes 6 over 2. This is also 6 divided by 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the value there is going to be 3. Okay, see if you can do this next one when a is equal to negative 2, or you can follow along with me. When a is equal to negative 2, I've got a divided by 2, but I'm going to replace that a with a negative 2. So this is negative 2 divided by 2, which I can think of as negative 2 divided by 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is equal to negative 1. So the value of that expression is a negative 1. We've got one more. Let's do this last one together. So I've got a is equal to 1 half. So I get a over 2. I'm going to replace that a with a 1 half. But I get this funky fraction. We actually call this a complex fraction because there's a fraction inside of it. Now I am going to use that division notation again. So I can think of this as 1 half divided by 2. Let's write that out. So I have 1 half divided by 2. 
but instead of dividing, I can multiply by its reciprocal. So I'm gonna think of this as two or two over one. Let's go ahead and take the reciprocal of this second fraction. As I do that, I get really close to my answer. So now I have one half, I'm gonna multiply by my reciprocal, one over two, and I can multiply straight across. One times one is one, and two times two is four, and that is our answer. Next up, I've got more expressions. So go ahead and take a look here at some advanced examples of evaluating expressions. You're doing great.